evening, everybody, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're here at the Broadfield Stadium, which is looking a little bit different than usual as they cover the pitch ahead of the Brighton women's game here on Sunday. We've got another action-packed show for you tonight, and to kick things off, we're going to check out how the Reds got on against Barrow here at the Broadfield Stadium last Saturday. Tony Vessi and I were just wrapping up the game and we've described it as not pretty but very, very gritty here by Crawley Town this afternoon. They are now five unbeaten in the league. Ashley Nelson's goal after six minutes is enough to give the Reds three points. They had to hold on to a bit of a barrage in the last five or ten minutes from Yep, a very impressive victory as we extended our league unbeaten run to five matches. A lot of those coming here at the Broadfield Stadium where we've been on absolute fire. Young, he's done such a good job with the lads and, you know, the crowd has played their part. It's been an incredible atmosphere and we've seen really good numbers, which we're hoping will only improve with the World Cup. You know, obviously, season ticket holders from Brighton, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham. If anyone's local and you're watching this, just get yourself down. You know, League Two football, we've had some great games recently and you won't be disappointed. We've lowered our ticket prices this year and, you know, we've got a few very exciting games, free home games on the trot coming up. So we hope to see plenty of new faces coming through the door while the World Cup is on. 
Recently, we've brought a new addition to Talk of the Town, teammates. We've seen plenty of the players give their opinions on their teammates, but it's, we thought it's only fair, you know, we've done a couple of these before, that we get some of the playing staff in. And this week, we've got Matt, the new kit man, and Darren Byfield, who I'm sure you all know because he's quite the character and he's been involved in quite a lot recently. Even if we don't sort of force it upon him, he just sort of somehow always manages to get in front of the camera. But let's see what they thought of the teammates and their other staff members. Darren, welcome to teammates. You ready to play? I'm ready to go. I'm ready. We're going to start off with funniest player. Oh, there's a few in there. Dom Telford's up there. He likes a bit of a crack, uh, especially his northern accent. Uh, you've got Hess is quite funny, but only when he's moaning. Uh, and oh, I'd have to say Lynch has got a bit as well. He's like a quiet assassin in the banter side of things. Dom Telford. Funniest coach. Oh, to be honest, Powder Lee, but I've seen Watto as well. Watto's funny as well. Good Powder Lee and Watto. Oh, Watto. He's got some dry humour and yeah, you can get a laugh out of Watto. Best dress player? <sighs> that is a tough one. Gear's horrific. I thought it was voluntary work at one stage. I didn't think they were getting paid. <laughs> Um, Lynchy, I go Lynchy. Best dressed player. Oh, I'd say George Frankham. He comes in with some quite nice gear. Worst dressed player. Dom Telford for his choice of footwear. Uh, you need sunglasses to be able to see what he's actually got on his feet. And Dion when he walks in in a Chelsea tracksuit bottoms. Worst dressed player. Dom Telford. He gets that quite a lot. <sighs> Listen, it's great because he doesn't, sorry, my watch. <laughs> he doesn't bow under any pressure. He still comes in terrible gear, so well done to him. He's consistent. Got worse haircut? Worse haircut. Ha, see, now I got voted for this one by Jace before. Uh, I don't understand how someone who cuts his own hair and cuts it the way he does can call me out. But so he's up there. He's in my top three. Uh, the other one is Corey. I mean, he shaves it up to what, here? And then what does he do with the top of it? Not a lot. And then, uh, <laughs> and then there's, uh, and there's, and then, uh, and then there's, and then there's Dom Telford who, when he got on the coach to Colchester a few weeks ago, hadn't put it up. And he looked, honestly, he looked like a baby version of Hagrid. <laughs> Wellsy. <laughs> Wellsy. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Most vain player? Most vain player, Jaden. Most vain? Dom Telford. Hardest player, so who would you not want to get into a fight with? Any of them. Any of them? No, I'd like to fight all of them. No, I'm oh. joking. <laughs> no. Um, Tony Craig. Oh, yeah, Tony Craig. Lynch is a big lad. Lynch is a big lad. Yeah, Lynch Lynch would probably be the one. Yeah, he's a big lad. Best player? Oh, that's, that, that, oh, that's tough because favouritism. Um, the ones I can go with that I've done so well recently, um, Nico, Nadas have been superb. I thought Nick Cerullo is been great as well. Um, JB's injured, so but before his injury he was good. Don't want to miss anyone else though. So. Els has been good in goal. Best player. Oh, best player. Yeah, Watto, back in the day, uh, about 25 years ago, when you could run around and kick a ball. Um, no, I'll go for Tilly. Most likely to lose all their possessions on a night out? <laughs> Dom. <laughs> Dom. <laughs> Dom, yeah. yeah. Caleb. Without a shadow, honestly, he's just so dozy. He's on half the time, I don't think he even knows where he is. Most likely to be a successful manager? Find out the players. GF. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think GF. I watch him, how he carries himself uh, when he speaks. Uh, a lot of them listen as well, so yeah, I go GF. There's a couple. Youngy, obviously, because um, he is a successful manager. Um, Tony Craig as well. He's obviously at that stage of his career now where he's got a lot of experience behind him, so I think he'd be good. George Frankham as well. Finally, who's the most likely to go on Love Island next summer? Jaden. Jaden wins. Yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. 
Hands down, he wins. Tom Nichols. Tom Nichols. Wow, that's, we've not heard that one yet. Thank you very much for playing. Thank you. Yeah, another funny edition of Teammates. As you would have noticed, that was filmed at Horsham. But this week, we have completed our move to Southwater Sports Club, our new training base for the foreseeable at the moment to the end of the season. But as we said in the article, hopefully that will be extended into the future if all goes well this season. If, any, if this week is anything to go by, it's been absolutely fantastic. The guys there have been, you know, absolutely brilliant. You know, James, Neil, you know, there's so many names down there that I could mention. They've been so welcoming to us. Ben's done a fantastic job along with Evan and um, Eddie from Complete Turf Care getting the pitches ready. I mean, just the other night we had a month's worth of rainfall overnight and the pitch, you wouldn't have known that it had even rained on the pitches. It was absolutely incredible. It was like a practically like a sieve out there. It just literally absorbed it all up. The lads went out there. They trained well. Same again today, and they're on their way up to also as we speak. You know, just absolutely fantastic that we're finally, finally on grass. You know, it's been a long-term aim for so many people here, but it was all about finding, you know, the right site, and, you know, we're just so grateful to get that over the line. And you would have seen a lot of footage in that in the latest episode of Inside Crawley, which has returned. We're on episode two of this season. Things are going well again. You know, it's brilliant to see so many positive faces around training at the new training ground if you haven't watched the full episode it is available on our youtube channel but you can check out a short short snippet here <laughs> yeah it's been really good obviously we're down on the grass which is like a massive thing for us as a group um, you know, we just have to get used to it. Obviously, the ball's going to be running a little bit less uh, true than it was on the 4G. Um, but listen, the, the people down here have been brilliant. They've been really accommodating. And uh, I think the boys just love just being out on the grass. And, and uh, fingers crossed it starts to play evident for our performances. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm, I've been in football long enough to know that there's going to be highs and lows. Uh, at the minute, we're going through quite a, a good sort of upward trajectory from where we were prior um, but I'm one of those that sort of always stays anchored um, listen I'll probably get more upset when things are going better than when they're going bad um, but you know hopefully fingers crossed we can carry on on that trajectory and we go into obviously tomorrow night's game with a few boys needing a few minutes and then um, we've got a really tough game against Walsall at the weekend Yeah, well, I mean, as you can see behind me, the, the quality of the pitch is, is really good. Um, he's only had three weeks on it, um, so to, to be able to do what he's done in that time frame has been amazing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people, obviously Ben and Evan and, and Eddie from Complete Turf Care, who we've contracted to look after the pitches for the, for the foreseeable, have done a fantastic job. Um, equally, everyone down at Southwater, um, James, Neil, Sarah, the, the team down here, they've been really welcoming and you know, have really wanted to, to make this work. And I think from a, from a club perspective, what we can stress is that, OK, fine, look, we're, we're getting use out of some fantastic facilities, but, you know, it's a partnership that goes far beyond that. We've got elements that we want to be doing in the, in the community, um, getting some, some of the, the South Water locals down to games, offering coaching hours from, from Youngie and some of the other lads for, for their youth teams. So, yeah, it's sort of an all-encompassing partnership, really, and obviously we get the benefit of, of these facilities. Yep, yeah, as we said, you can check out the full episode of Inside Crawley over on our YouTube channel now. As I mentioned previously, we head to Walsall this weekend, you know, a side who have had an electric start to the season. They've sort of, you know, slightly fell off it you know, only momentarily, and they seem to be back on the horse now. Michael Flynn in charge, obviously a great manager. Pipped Lewis Young to the manager of the month, which a few of us here weren't too happy about. We thought Young, he deserved that one, but you can't argue at the job that he's done at Walsall. You know, they've got some incredible players. Danny Johnson, you know, a prolific striker in League Two. A certain Isaac Hutchinson that was here last year, you know, we all saw what Isaac could do. He scored a couple of very impressive goals for us, and we know what danger he'll bring tomorrow. You know, he's a key player for them and, you know, there's just plenty to watch out for. But we had two very entertaining games against them last year. We beat them 1-0 here at home and it was Isaac Hutchinson that scored the goal for us. But we also had a very entertaining game away at the now named Poundland Bescott Stadium where Tom Nichols was on the score sheet and you can check out the best bits here.
in the away end today. Did you spot him at all? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't miss that big head in there. Um, yeah, Tony come and watch, he's only up the road. Because um, we were going right in the second half, so the wind would be with Paul. Yeah. So I don't need to play a little bit more sense. I room. couldn't even work out the way it was Yep, looking forward to the game this Saturday. It's set to be another very entertaining fixture and we've heard that we've sold you know, great numbers of tickets again so we can't wait to see you all there at the Poundland Bescott Stadium. Once Saturday's out of the way, there is this apparent event called the World Cup happening. Don't know if any of you have heard of it. Obviously starts starts on Sunday, England's first game on the Monday. You would have seen on the club website and social media that you can actually watch the games here at Reds Bar. All of England's group stage matches will be played in the Reds Bar and our new outdoor marquee, which I'm surprised you actually can't see it poking out the top of the stadium because it is massive and it's going to have a 150-inch projector screen in there. So if there's anywhere to watch your World Cup, I think it's going to be there. You know, a lot of the fan zones around this area, they charge you. We don't. Come in, book for free, and just spend your money at the bar and we'll be happy. It, you know, England games, I think we featured on the Euros, the final of the Euros last year. They're, um, they're like montage of fans. There was some actually scenes from the Reds bar shown live on ITV for the final, so that's pretty incredible. It's always a very good atmosphere, so make sure you book on with Rona, give her a call and book your space. We still have spaces left for all three matches, but, you know, I'm sure... I'm sure it's going to be filling up pretty quickly. Speaking of the World Cup, at training the other day, we asked the lads and some of the staff members their opinions on who's going to win the World Cup. Quite a lot of people said England, which scares me a little bit because I don't like that confidence. But, you know, we had some pretty pretty unique answers in there. I mean, Jack Powers is one to look out for. I'm not sure why he said what he said, but you'll have to wait and see what he said. Jason, yes, who's winning the World Cup? Oh, it's coming home, lads, isn't it? Is it? 100%. Is it? 108. I've got England fever. Yeah. Wait, if you see me here Monday, I'll have face paint on St George's, I'll have my George's flag, yeah. everything, yeah. It's coming home. Ross, who's winning the World Cup? Argentina. What? Messi effect. What? Messi, yeah? One player. Yeah. One player. One player. And McAllister. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just. He's a Brighton fan. He's a Brighton fan. It doesn't count. <laughs> Jed, who's winning the World Cup, mate? Brazil and Neymar. Yeah. Yeah. Neymar. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Italy, yeah? Yeah? Nadas, who's winning the World Cup, mate? Messi. Messi effect. Tills, World Cup winner. England coming, England. coming home. Who's winning the World Cup? Uh, probably Brazil. Who's winning the World Cup? Oh, tell you what. Here he is. <laughs> who's winning the World Cup, mate? Absolutely no question. England, mate. It's coming home, baby. I can't believe the amount of people that said England so but Tony, who's winning the World Cup? England. England. Who's winning the World Cup? Brazil, 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 Brazil. Brazil there. Brazil and England are the popular answers so far. Argentina. Ludi, who's winning the World Cup? France. France, yeah, there's one for France. Only one person said France so far. Yeah. GM, who's winning the World Cup? Qatar. <laughs> Brazil. Okay, Ludi's changed his answer to Brazil. Lads, who's winning the World Cup? Argentina. Jack. Um, Australia. Are they even in it? Lads, who's winning the World Cup? You're definitely going to say England, I know. I want Portugal to win it. You want yeah, I want Portugal to win it. Um, Brazil, probably. Brazil? Argentina. Argentina. Lewis, who's winning the World Cup? George, who's winning the World Cup? Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I ain't really been paying attention too no, much to be what's going on. Two games. Uh, <laughs> who's top of League Two at the minute? I don't even know that. No, <laughs> uh, I'll go England. Come on, come on, mate. Brazil. 
Oh. Yeah. England versus Brazil. Who, who's winning the World Cup? Uh, France. It's two for yeah. France. Who's winning the World Cup? Um, Man City. <laughs> who's winning the World Cup? Brazil. Okay, cool. Did you say who do I think or who do I want to? Who do you think? Brazil. Who do you want? England. Oh, well, yeah, okay, that's a stupid question, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pally, mate, not to distract you, but we want to know why you've said Australia. Um, no. There's a good reason for it, but I can't actually say. What's up? No. Not allowed to say, or? I'll reveal it at a later date. Yeah. So when when they're in like the, when we're in the court when they're in the quarterfinals, we'll come back. Another action-packed show for you this evening. We hope you enjoyed. We can't wait to see plenty of you up at Walsall tomorrow to cheer on the lads. The World Cup starts Sunday. We'll see you here on Monday for the Iran game in the Reds Bar and the new outdoor marquee. And then we're here again for Gillingham. It really is an action-packed few days. And then, obviously, we're back here at home on the Saturday. So we're going to see you soon. But for now, come on, you Reds. What you don't know is that I've now got to go and finish washing the players' pants because the kit man has gone to Walsall and all the training kit still needs to be washed. Goodbye.